Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you want more daily updates on audiobook. Will Power and Self-Discipline, by Rima Sasson. Introduction Most people admire and respect strong individuals who have won great success by manifesting willpower and self-discipline. People in all walks of life, who with sheer willpower, self-discipline and ambition have improved their life, learned new skills, overcame difficulties and hardships, reduced their weight, rose high in their chosen field or advanced on the spiritual path. Willpower and self-discipline are two of the most important and useful inner powers in everyone's life, and have always been considered as essential tools for success in all areas of life. Yet, in spite of this, only few take any steps to develop and strengthen them in a systematic way. I have found that most people desire to obtain more control over their lives, overcome laziness and change their habits and behavior, but they neither believe that this can be done, nor possess enough inner strength to do that. This is because methods for developing willpower and self-discipline are not common knowledge. They are not taught at school, and hardly anywhere else. Willpower is usually associated with ambitious, powerful and successful people. Self-discipline is mostly associated with people who live a harsh, rigorous and limited life, and with people who seek a spiritual life in secluded places, such as in monasteries or in caves on the Himalayas. These are completely wrong concepts. Everyone can reach high levels of power with a practical method of training. Willpower and self-discipline can be learned and developed like any other skill. The system of training provided in this book enables you to easily integrate the training into daily life and develop these abilities through simple, but effective exercises. It does not matter if your willpower and self-discipline are weak now. It is within your reach to attain them. Willpower and self-discipline are two of the main ingredients of every kind of success. Their possession will help you overcome weakness and dependability, and gain strength and independence. You will be able to make decisions and follow them. You will learn to pull your own strings, have control over your habits, behavior, actions and reactions, and gain the ability to manifest inner strength in every situation. Every day people face situations they do not like, but with which they have to deal. Everyone possesses habits and behavior patterns he wishes he could change, or has some weaknesses he would have been happy to overcome. I have endeavored to provide in this book the necessary information and techniques to develop inner power, and the ability to deal with negative habits and behavior, weakness, indecisiveness, procrastination and laziness. It is not a book about psychology, but a practical manual for training the willpower and self-discipline. The book contains practical methods and exercises that are simple, and can be performed by everyone, everywhere and at any time. For most of the exercises you do not need to set apart any special time. They can to be practiced during daily life, each exercise chosen according to the conditions and the circumstances encountered. You will find out that your daily life provides endless opportunities for practicing exercises to develop your willpower and self-discipline. The methods of this book have always been taught from ancient times, but have rarely been publicized. They have been mostly taught within the circles of those who followed the path's inner development, spirituality and occultism. I have taken what I could find, and added explanations and instructions, together with many new exercises. I have started with the study of willpower and self-discipline, after I have realized that they were essential for both daily life, and for the practical study and practice of concentration and meditation. This book brings you the knowledge and experience I have gained, and the exercises I have learnt, gathered, created and practiced. There is nothing here that endangers you in any way or attracts to you any undue attention from the people around you. This is inner work and there is no need to let the world know what you are doing. Each exercise charges your willpower and self-discipline batteries with power. When your batteries are charged, your powers are available for use whenever you need to manifest them. The methods of this book can be compared to physical training. 
By exercising and developing the muscles one gains a muscular, well-shaped body, physical strength and endurance. When this person wishes to use his strength, it is immediately available for him. It is exactly the same with willpower and self-discipline. A person develops willpower and self-discipline by purposely and willingly overcoming inner resistance, and when he needs them for any purpose, they are immediately available for him. Willpower and self-discipline are closely connected. By developing and strengthening any one of them, the other is developed and strengthened too. Read and reread the book and practice the exercises. Reading it will enhance your understanding of the subject and strengthen your motivation and desire to succeed, but only by constant practice you gain real strength. This book will open for you a whole new horizon. After you start to practice the exercises and experience their effects, you will begin to like the exercises, enjoy doing them, and derive a wonderful feeling of power, strength and satisfaction. Dare to be strong. Have faith in yourself. Decide to develop your willpower and self-discipline, follow your decision, persevere with your efforts and success will be yours. Chapter 1. Definitions, Explanations and Benefits. What is willpower? Willpower is the inner strength to make a decision, take action, and handle and execute any aim or task, regardless of inner and outer resistance, discomfort or difficulty. It is inner firmness, decisiveness, determination, resolution, persistence and the power of pushing towards any goal. Willpower is the ability to carry out actions, even if they are unpleasant, tedious and require effort, or are contrary to one's habits. It manifests as decisiveness, perseverance and tenacity. It is a valuable and an important key for being successful in life. A strong and well-developed willpower helps to execute plans, study and exercise. It gives the strength and decisiveness to act now instead of procrastinating, to resist the temptation to eat another slice of cake, to get quickly out of bed in the morning, assert yourself, and do anything that you desire, but feel too weak to do. Willpower overcomes inner and outer resistance. It bestows the strength not to give up in the face of difficulties, and carry out whatever you start to its positive and successful end. It is the inner power that overcomes temptations and negative habits. Willpower helps to reach a positive decision about any course of action, and execute this decision, even if there are other things that you prefer to do. It is the power to follow one's beliefs in spite of difficulties or opposition. It is the driving power behind perseverance. What is self-discipline? Self-discipline is the rejection of instant gratification in favor of something better. It is giving up instant pleasure and satisfaction for a higher and better goal. It is the ability of the individual to stick to actions, thoughts, and behavior, which lead to improvement and success. Self-discipline is self-control, and it manifests in spiritual, mental, emotional and physical discipline. A self-disciplined person does not produce excuses, but keeps and fulfills the promises he makes to himself and to others, and carry out his decisions. Here are a few examples, if you have an appointment at a certain hour, you are there on time. If you make a promise to finish some work at a certain hour or date, you finish it by that time. If you promise yourself to start a self-improvement program, study, exercise or meditate, you keep this promise. If you decide to slim or eat only healthy food, you follow this decision, even if you have to give up your favorite food and change your eating habits. Possessing self-discipline means overcoming laziness, procrastination, indecision and weakness, and taking the necessary action in any situation, even if it is unpleasant and requires effort. Self-discipline is the ability to say yes or no, and not changing one's mind without a good reason. Self-discipline affords a person the ability to concentrate on a task, as long as it is necessary to learn, perfect, and complete it. A person can be talented, bright and educated, but without self-discipline he will reach nowhere. Self-discipline bestows the power to persevere and succeed in everything, big or small. 
Self-discipline is the power, which gives one control over his habits, behavior, actions and reactions, exercise moderation in what he does, and the strength not to succumb to whims and rash impulsive actions. When it is really strong, one can withstand pressures and temptations, and does not let outside forces or passing thoughts decide for him. People who possess self-discipline are able to set goals and work towards their achievement day after day, until they accomplish them. They are able to make sustained efforts. Anything worthwhile needs sustained effort to achieve, and without self-discipline there is no sustained effort. Self-discipline is not a punishment or a restrictive lifestyle. It does not mean being narrow-minded or living like a fakir. It means doing what you think is best and appropriate to do at any given moment. Its lack is the cause of failure in relationships and in business, of strife, unhappiness, tension, obesity and health problems. Willpower can be described as the initiative element, and self-discipline as the accomplishing element. In order to decide, start and work towards accomplishing your task or ambition, whether small or big, you need willpower. To stick until the successful end you need self-discipline. Self-discipline and willpower work together and strengthen each other. The good news is that willpower and self-discipline are skills that can be learned and developed. You will find that the terms inner strength and inner power are widely used in this book. They relay the same meaning and are the combined powers of willpower and self-discipline. They give the ability to take action, overcome habits, resist pressure and stand up to any emergency. They are analogous to physical strength. The Inner Power Battery Consciously and purposely refraining from useless, unnecessary and worthless desires, thoughts, feelings and actions builds up and reinforces willpower and self-discipline. Each time you reject and refuse to appease any senseless, unimportant and unnecessary desire, you charge the battery of your willpower and self-discipline. When the battery of your willpower and self-discipline is fully charged, it supplies power whenever it is needed. Personal Experience Spirituality and self-growth have fascinated me from an early age. I was about 15 years old when my interest was first kindled. My father used to talk with me about the power of thoughts and the occult, and to show me his interesting books. These conversations evoked my interest and curiosity, and the desire to experience these things. Later, I started to read my father's large collection of books and magazines about inner development, mind power, the occult, yoga, psychology and philosophy. Along the years my interest has grown and deepened. I have collected and read many books about the power of concentration, visualization, mind power, meditation and spirituality, and practiced what they taught. Mauni Sadhu, a very talented spiritual and occult writer, wrote some of the books that have especially attracted my attention and interest. Among other things, he wrote about the importance of willpower, and gave some useful advice and instructions. The method he presented was of conquering and refusing to satisfy unimportant inner impulses and desires, as a way to train the will. What he said was very fascinating, and I enthusiastically started to practice the exercises he suggested. They were simple, uncomplicated and practical, and yielded almost immediate results. At about the same time I was making my first steps in learning and practicing concentration exercises and meditation. I realized that willpower and self-discipline were very important for developing the power concentration and practicing meditation. I came to the conclusion that a strong willpower and developed self-discipline were essential for developing perseverance and for success in self-improvement techniques, spiritual growth and controlling the mind. One of the first exercises that I practiced was drinking my coffee and tea without sugar. Until then I used to add two teaspoonful of sugar to each cup I drank. I wanted to test my willpower and to find out whether I could endure the unsweetened beverages for a whole week. At first it was tough, because they were bitter and not tasty, but after about a week I got used to the bitter taste. This victory made me very happy, increased my inner strength, 
and motivated me to continue. After practicing the exercise for some time, I stopped experiencing inner resistance or discomfort, and therefore, if I wished, I could have resorted to my previous habit of drinking with sugar, but didn't, because I began to like that taste. Years have passed since then, and I still enjoy drinking hot beverages without sugar, though sometimes I do add half a teaspoon of sugar to the tea only, when it is too strong. Acting contrary to a habit, and doing some disagreeable action strengthen the power of the will, self-discipline and endurance, and that is exactly the role of this exercise. After strengthening your willpower by conquering a habit, you may, if you wish, return to your old habit, if it is not harmful and you still like it. You might consider the above-mentioned exercise as a sacrifice or as giving up of pleasure, but this is only temporary and for a good purpose. By training your willpower in this way you strengthen it, just as you strengthen your muscles by lifting heavy weights at a gym. You make some effort in order to gain a stronger will. You sacrifice a pleasure for the sake of gaining something better. I wish to share with you another experience I went through at the beginning of my training. At that time I began reading a very thick book, but after reading a few pages I put it aside, as it was too boring. At that very moment I remembered that one of the ways to strengthen willpower was by doing disagreeable things and completing them. I decided that no matter how boring the book is, I am going to read it through. I stuck with my decision, and went through each page to the last one. Though it was a small accomplishment, it was a great victory for me, since I was able to overcome the opposition of my mind. This incident filled me with strength, and the faith that I can overcome any inner resistance. I felt that if I could read a boring book, I would be able to do greater things that need more inner effort. Later, I have noticed that this exercise, and similar ones, developed my ability to go through and finish whatever I started to do, not just reading books. Over the years I have read whatever I could find about this intriguing subject, and invented and practiced many more exercises. The Benefits of Willpower and Self-Discipline Here is a partial list of what willpower and self-discipline can do for you, overcome laziness. Overcome shyness. Overcome negative habits overcome fear. Overcome inner resistance. Resist temptations. Stop smoking. Lose weight. Engage in physical training or sport activity. Stop procrastinating and postponing for tomorrow or some indefinite future whatever you have to do. Stick to your decisions and execute them. Exhibit initiative. Act instead of just daydream. Control, change and improve your habits. Control your eating habits. Be able to get up early in the morning always finish what you start. Get over anger and other negative feelings. Improve concentration. Improve the ability to meditate. Start a self-improvement program. Succeed in whatever you do. Be able to say, no, when you mean it. Have the courage to speak up your mind. Will power and self-discipline have immense value in all walks of life? They are necessary for almost every act. The more they are developed, the more control you have over your life. If you intend to achieve any kind of success in your life, whether big or small, then willpower and self-discipline are a must. They resemble a powerful engine, which is at your disposal. Without them you let other people, circumstances and chance to direct your life. They help to focus the mind and persevere while studying. They give the courage to ask for a raise, refuse to do work that is unfairly delegated, pursue a diet, and use time wisely instead of wasting it. Will power and self-discipline are required at work and at home, when alone or when in company. They endow the power to control moods, thoughts, words and actions. Real inner power, which is gained by systematic development, is always available, under all times and conditions. It is not something that manifests sporadically and occasionally, but is under the control of the person possessing it. What are you willing to do in order to attain this power, 
to be always able to follow your decisions to the end, and to have more control over your life. Read on, and find out how to gain this power. Why most people lack will power and self-discipline. What would you prefer to do, sit in an armchair and watch a romantic soap opera, or clean the house? Would you prefer to lie down in bed and read a book, while it is raining outside, or pull yourself out of bed and go to the gym to exercise? Would you prefer to eat a delicious piece of cake rich in calories, or cucumbers and tomatoes? 1. Most people prefer a comfortable laziness to actions that require effort. Indolence is very comfortable. It has no demands, and needs no effort. On the other hand, willpower and self-discipline are not always comfortable. They demand decisiveness and action. 2. The fear of failure holds back decisiveness and taking positive action. Many find it hard to manifest willpower due to negative habits and thoughts. Their minds have been subconsciously programmed by their environment and circumstances to dwell on negative thoughts and expect the worst. This attitude makes them weak and dependent, and prevents them from manifesting inner power. Deep-seated thoughts, suggestions and habits that have sunk into the subconscious mind prevent the inner power from manifesting. Children hear from an early age the following or similar words, this cannot be done. This is not good for you. Avoid this, and beware of that. These words repress initiative, self-reliance and creativity, and the child develops fears and repulsion about certain things. He is taught not to rely on himself, and he grows up with weak will power and self-discipline, unless he becomes aware of this weakness and decides to do something about it. 3. Parents and teachers try to teach children discipline, but more often it is the enforcement of their will on the children, and not any true guidance to develop self-discipline. This attitude usually engenders opposition and clashes. This is one of the reasons why children, and later as adults, exhibit a subconscious dislike of discipline. They feel and regard discipline of any kind as limitation of freedom, and as something unpleasant and frightening. As grown-ups, they grow and settle into a certain kind of life, which they fear to change, even if it is unpleasant and they don't like it. They consider change and improvement to be difficult, if not impossible. They accept their character and abilities as fixed, and the idea of gaining inner strength and power doesn't even occur to them. For, all of us confront many, hard-to-ignore temptations, almost each hour of the day. Just think about the quantity of the ads in the newspapers, the magazines, and on TV. Look at the assortment of products for sale in the supermarkets and shopping malls, and the huge amount of available entertainment, such as TV, movies, restaurants, concerts, sports competitions etc. It is not easy to resist all these temptations. How can you resist the beautifully arranged and tasty food at the supermarket, or resist watching a TV show, which offers a pleasant escape from daily life? All these temptations distract the attention, weaken the will and the concentration, and divert the mind from focusing and manifesting decisiveness and inner power. Lack of willpower makes it difficult to stick in one direction, when there are so many other pleasant things to do or choose, and which offer immediate gratification. This turns into a vicious circle, where one manifests no willpower and self-discipline, but follows his every whim and desire. 5. A lot of people find it hard to manifest willpower, due to feelings of unworthiness and weakness, reinforcing the inner powers is not a common knowledge. Neither teachers at school nor parents teach it, because most of them do not know much about it. Very few people know that these powers can be gradually strengthened by proper exercises. Most people to go through life letting other people, the environment, and circumstances control their lives and decide for them. It is easier and more convenient to sink into self-pity, when encountering failure. It is easier and more convenient to listen to people who say that this or that cannot be done, rather than pull yourself together, rise up and decide that you are capable and able to succeed. It is easy to let laziness win, even though it is fruitless, as this needs no effort. Negative habits and thoughts, 
repressed initiative and creativity, feelings of unworthiness and weakness, laziness and fear, are just few of the obstacles that stand in the way of expressing willpower and self-discipline. If willpower and self-discipline were taught at school like any other subject, life would have been so much better for many of us. Chapter 2. Inner Tools for Inner Work. Make a Firm Decision. The first step is to make some firm decisions. Decide that you are not going to give in anymore to habits you do not like. Decide that you want to stop being weak and start manifesting inner strength. Decide that acquiring willpower and self-discipline is important for you, and that from now on you are going to develop and strengthen them. If you feel that you do not possess enough inner strength, and usually fail to follow your decisions and carry them out, you may have little faith in yourself, and doubt your ability to carry out the above decisions. Forget about the past, as this time it is different, because you are going to learn not only to make decisions and promises, but act upon them as well. Think and rethink about the importance of the above decisions, and what they can do for you, if you follow them. Be willing to practice the exercises and pursue the necessary training. Have faith in yourself that you are capable to develop your willpower, attain self-discipline and become strong and decisive. This is your first exercise in manifesting these powers. Once you decide, you have to follow your decision. You will not get much just by reading this book. You need to practice what you read. Here are a few things you can do to strengthen your resolve, each day during the following week, read and think about the benefits of possessing willpower and self-discipline. Think and meditate what they will do to your life. This will strengthen your resolve to practice the exercises, and make it easier for you to start. Take a sheet of paper and write down in big letters, willpower and self-discipline are important assets. I resolve to gain inner strength and be strong. Put the paper where you can see it often, so as to remind yourself of your decision. For at least a week, repeat the above sentence twice a day like a mantra, when you are in bed at night until you fall asleep, and for about five minutes, first thing upon waking up in the morning. These words will sink into your subconscious mind, and make it easier for you to follow your decisions. Inner Resistance to Practice the Exercises it is quite probable that even if you are convinced of the importance of possessing well-developed willpower and self-discipline you will experience inner resistance to perform the exercises. The mind and body resist any new pattern of behavior and oppose any deviation from well-known habits. After all, these exercises are intended to put you in charge of your life, pushing the supremacy of the mind to the second place. The mind is so habituated to act unhindered that it opposes any action to change the habits and think and act in a different manner. The resistance may appear in various ways, as the mind's arsenal of resistance is huge. You may forget to practice the exercises. You may feel too lazy to do them or you may postpone doing them. You may feel that the exercises are too difficult, they are a burden or that they are an unpleasant task. Doing the exercises in spite the inner resistance is an exercise in manifesting willpower. The best advice is to disregard the resistance of the mind, not give up, and insist on performing the exercises. It is not so hard as you might think. The first exercises are simple and easy to perform. The idea is to progress gradually, beginning with easy exercises, so as to gain confidence and expertise, before moving to other exercises, which necessitate more power. After practicing the exercises for some time you will begin to enjoy the power and confidence they bestow, and this will give you the strength and ambition to go on. As your inner strength increases with the help of the exercises, it will be easier for you to disregard and overcome any inner resistance you may encounter. Change often meets inner and outer resistance at first. It is by surmounting and overcoming any inner and outer opposition that success is achieved. By overcoming resistance you teach the mind to obey you. The mind is a creature of habit, and no matter how hard it may oppose you at the beginning, if you persevere with your efforts it eventually becomes your ally.
Through persistence you can change the habits of the mind, and make it support you instead of oppose you. The Power of Choice There are always various options for handling every situation, but the subconscious habits usually dictate the way one acts. Most people do not realize that they can consciously, and through the act of their will, choose the way they behave, act and react. If they let habits and subconscious reactions rule, then they are not exercising their power of choice, but letting automatic habits dictate their behavior. Here is an example to make it easier to understand. Suppose there is a particular person, whom you do not like, and who makes you angry each time he talks with you. You have two options before you, to continue to get angry or choose to stay calm and friendly. If you choose the second option, carry out your decision the next time you meet him. Become aware of the state of your feelings, and stay calm. Choose not to get angry, but to exhibit self-control. By doing so you strengthen your willpower, change your attitude, and may even change the other person's attitude towards you. By consciously choosing how to act and react, you acquire the power to control the outcome of your actions, and develop and strengthen the inner muscles of willpower and self-discipline. Before every decision or action look at the situation, and choose which way to follow. It is like being at a crossroads. You can walk in one direction without thinking where it will lead you, or you can choose and decide consciously, as an act of your willpower, which direction to follow. There will probably be some inner tension and resistance at first, but this is natural. It takes time to change habits. You need patience, attention and perseverance. As you proceed with this book, you will find many opportunities to strengthen and develop the power of choice. Begin to manifest it in small matters, and in time it will become easy to manifest it in bigger matters. Patience Patience is a desired character quality, but seems to be an uncommon commodity. We all need it in all of our activities, and in our relations with the people we meet. It is a great virtue, always and everywhere, and is one of the pillars of every kind of success. Think how many times during a day you need patience. You need it at home, in your relations with your spouse, children or parents, at work, with your boss, colleagues or customers, while driving, waiting in line, waiting for something or someone, in a conversation, and in many other places and situations. Lack of patience causes anger, nervousness, thoughtlessness, misunderstandings, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness. It also causes intolerance, errors of judgment, inappropriate actions, and an inability to finish what has been started. Patience adds grace, respect and tolerance. It helps you make your life happier, more satisfying and successful. I believe you agree with me that life would be more pleasant, if more patience is exhibited. As you proceed with the exercises, you will find that besides strengthening your willpower and self-discipline, they also strengthen and increase your patience. Perseverance can you speak a foreign language fluently after studying for only one or two days? Certainly not. Can you build strong muscles in one week of training? Certainly not. Only by perseverance you get results, and this includes willpower and self-discipline as well. You have to persevere with the exercises in order to reap their full benefits. As your willpower and self-discipline get stronger through the performance of the exercises, your power of perseverance will increase too. These three are interrelated. You will notice that on many occasions, while performing an exercise, your mind will try to divert your attention to something else, or will persuade you to drop the whole matter. Do not listen to it, persevere in your efforts and success will be yours. It is true that at the start it will not be so easy to manifest perseverance. Keep on thinking about the benefits of perseverance, and the importance of attaining inner strength. Positive thoughts and attitudes will sink into your subconscious mind, which will eventually support you, and help you manifest more perseverance. It is vital to go on and practice the exercises on a daily basis, in order to acquire inner strength. It is not much use to perform one exercise, and then do nothing for several days. 
concentration and willpower. Can you hold your mind on one subject for several moments, without following any other thought? Most people find it hard to hold the attention for any length of time on one single subject or object, unless it is something that interests them very much. The mind is too restless to keep focused on one thought. Willpower can hold and rivet the attention in one place without swerving. As you strengthen your willpower, you will find that your power of concentration increases too. Willpower is one of the essential keys for the mastery of the mind and attaining good concentration ability. Strong willpower bestows the capability to concentrate on a task, and do whatever is needed to do, even if you have no interest in it, dislike it, or it is boring. In fact, anyone who wishes to develop his concentration power should start with developing his willpower first. After working with the exercises you will discover that your ability to concentrate on any job increases. It will become easier to concentrate while studying, reading or working. Positive thinking and positive attitude. Always maintain a positive attitude about your ability to improve your willpower and self-discipline. Refuse to dwell on negative thoughts, and do not listen to people who tell you can't succeed. Never think that you are weak and lack power. On the contrary, think and believe that you are strong, and have the ability to acquire more power. Positive thinking is not just repeating a few positive words, and then expecting miracles to happen. It is not enough to repeat some positive sentences once in a while. For positive thinking to be effective, you have to truly believe what you say. You must have unwavering faith, and substitute each negative thought with a positive one. A positive attitude means thinking in terms of possibilities and expecting the best, but also taking positive actions to achieve positive results. It means that even when you encounter failure you do not lose your faith, but try again. It means doing, acting and trying no matter what the circumstance are. Words have power, therefore each time you hear yourself saying, I cannot do this. I am too weak. I have no power to pursue this subject. My will power is weak. I have no self-discipline, and there is nothing I can do about it. I cannot make up my mind. I don't have the stamina to finish what I have started. Change these words to, I can do this. I am strong. I am courageous. I possess great inner power. My will power is strong. My self-discipline is very strong. Whatever I start to do, I go through with it until I accomplish it. Believe and feel, or at least pretend that these positive words are true. If you go on in this way your attitude will gradually change. You will become stronger, feel more capable and optimistic, and your desire to develop inner strength will increase. It will then become easier to perform the exercises. You may also add visualization to strengthen your positive attitude. Visualize yourself in various situations manifesting willpower and self-discipline. Make the mental images clear, and feel the strength inside you. You will start to feel stronger if you focus on the image, and do not let contrary thoughts enter your mind. A positive attitude makes the mind focus on finding solutions, on taking action, moving forward and on success. Inner strength overcomes boredom. Do you sometimes feel bored? and find it hard to pass the time? Are there times when you count the minutes that seem to pass so slowly? On the other hand, how does the time pass away, when you are absorbed in something you enjoy? When you are interested in what you are doing, you are hardly aware of the time. Interest makes one forget about everything else. Why is that so? Concentration and attention are the answer. If your whole attention goes into what you are doing, you can't be bored. On the other hand, when what you are doing does not hold any interest, it is difficult to hold the attention, and you become bored and restless. It is boring to do something, if you cannot focus on it. This causes frustration and a feeling of limitation. Actions done while the mind is focused on something else often produce poor results. Putting your whole attention on what you are doing eliminates boredom, and makes time disappear. Take the example of a movie. 
you get absorbed in an interesting movie, forget everything else and lose awareness of the passing time. If the movie is not interesting, you do not focus on it, your mind drifts away and you get bored. A strong willpower is a great aid for focusing and getting absorbed in what one is doing, whether it is interesting or not, without getting bored and restless. It does not allow the mind to drift. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine was invited to a classic music concert. He does not usually go to concerts, though he likes classic music. When he listens to music, it is usually as background music, and not as the main theme of his attention. While sitting in the concert hall, he couldn't keep his attention on the music. His mind and attention wandered to the people sitting around him, to his work, things he has to do, and to all kinds of thoughts that floated through his mind. He did not concentrate on the music and waited for the concert to end, so he could go home. Suddenly he became aware of what he was doing, and said to himself, What is going on? What am I doing? I came to the concert to listen to the music and enjoy it, so why am I bored? He decided to concentrate and hold his attention on the music. His mind tried again and again to divert the attention, but he held it firmly, deciding that he was going to concentrate on the music and enjoy it, no matter what. And you know what? After a few moments he became so engrossed in the music that he forgot about everything else, and had a wonderful time for the rest of the concert. Boredom was completely gone, and he was not aware of the passing time. A strong and trained willpower helps to focus the attention on what one is doing and hold it there. When you are able to focus your attention, you become able to immerse yourself in whatever you do, and therefore cannot get bored. Pulling your own strings. Do you sometimes find yourself saying and doing things against your better judgment? Do you find yourself accepting other people's ideas and gratifying their will, and at the same time being angry with yourself for acting this way? Do you sometimes spend money on something you do not need, just because someone persuaded you to buy it? When someone talks to you with anger, do you follow his behavior and get angry too? A strong willpower confers the ability to accept or reject at will outside influences. Inner strength enables you to say what you think without fear. When you possess inner strength, your actions will be initiated by you, and not as a reaction to outside influences. Willpower and self-discipline provide the confidence to act on your own decisions, and not because of other people's pressure. Why let other people pull your strings? Why not strengthen your willpower and start pulling your own strings? You have your own will. Learn to say no when you mean it. Don't be afraid of what others might say about you. If you always give in, people might take advantage of you. This brings unhappiness, frustration and resentment. Performing the exercises in this book will increase your inner strength and confidence, and put the reins of your actions and reactions into your hands. Keeping silence about your inner work. Silence is golden. It is better not to spread the word about what you are doing. This is inner work, and to be more effective it is advisable to remain silent about it. People like to ridicule those who embark on any path of self-development, and might try to convince you that what you are doing is futile, and you would better drop it. By keeping silent you save yourself a lot of inconvenience and criticism. It is a waste of time and energy to argue and try to convince people about your beliefs. Save this energy for better things. Besides, arguing makes the mind restless and might evoke anger and resentment, which are better avoided. If you meet someone who is sincerely interested in what you are doing, you may share your knowledge with him or her, though is it better to keep utterly silent about your inner work, until you possess strong willpower and self-discipline. Then, criticism and ridicule will have no effect on you, and you will become immune to what people say. But until you gain inner strength, silence is golden. Desire and Motivation Success in every field requires desire and motivation. How can you embark on a self-improvement program or begin any project, if you do not possess enough desire and motivation? 
In order to practice the exercises successfully and gain their benefits, you have to desire to do them, and to invest effort and time in them. You have to be convinced of the importance of willpower and self-discipline in your life, and to understand that they are a key factor for every success. You have also to keep yourself motivated, so as not to drop the matter and discontinue the exercises. In order to keep your desire and motivation alive, you need to think often about the benefits of willpower and self-discipline, and let the fire of desire and motivation rise up. Read inspiring stories about people who exhibited these traits of character. Watch strong people in action. Think about the changes you want to make in your life, and which require inner power. All these actions will increase your desire and strengthen your motivation. Real success is achieved through a strong desire and motivation, and not by a lukewarm attitude. An indifferent attitude does not get you far. Desire and motivation are like a powerful engine that keeps pushing you forward. They determine how much zest, life, energy and ambition you put in everything you do. Without them there is standing still and no advancement. Chapter 3. Introduction to the Exercises. Start with simple and easy exercises. The exercises have been arranged from the easy to the more difficult. It is important to start with easier exercises, which don't call for much effort. If you start with exercises that for now are too difficult for you, you might not be able to perform them, get frustrated and disappointed, and leave the whole matter. As your power increases, move on to more challenging exercises. This is the proper approach that will lead you to success. Never think about how long you still have to go or analyze your advancement, just practice the exercises day after day. Thinking and analyzing how much work you still have to do is just a waste of time and energy, and may make you impatient. Better devote this time to practice. Don't be overwhelmed by the number of exercises. You don't have to perform all of them. Even the performance of only a small part of them will increase your inner strength considerably. Yet, if you are really serious about getting stronger you will eventually perform all of them, excepting of course those that do not apply to your life circumstances. It is also important that at the start you do not try to perform too many exercises, even if you are enthusiastic. Go slowly. It is not the number that counts, but the quality. Think often about the benefits of what you are doing. You will also need to constantly remind yourself to perform the exercises, as your mind will probably try to make you forget them. The mind feels that if you get stronger, you will be able to control it, and therefore it opposes your efforts, as it wants to be free and uncontrolled. It takes some time and effort to turn the exercises into a habit. Along the way, and especially at the start, there might be laziness, procrastination and suggestions from your mind to give up. Your mind might tell you that there are other more important things to do, and whisper to you about the pleasures you are missing if you practice the exercises. Be strong, persevere, and don't give in. Gradually the mind will accept your new attitude and go along with it. As you progress, and see your willpower and self-discipline growing stronger, you will begin to enjoy and love the exercises. Watching your power increasing will make you more confident and happy, and your ambition and desire to go on with the exercises will get stronger. Exercising your inner muscles. In this book I have included exercises that I have read about and practiced, and others that I have invented myself. You might find some of them too easy and others more difficult. Some may make no sense to you, and others might seem ridiculous. Imagine someone watching for the first in his life a person training in a gym. This may seem to him a weird spectacle. He sees someone doing a nonsensical act of lifting heavy weight for no purpose. He might think that this person is mad. Why would anyone make such an effort and lift heavy barbells? It looks such a futile activity. Yet, the person who lifts the barbells thinks differently, and knows that lifting them strengthens his muscles. Developing willpower and self-discipline resemble physical training. In both cases some of the exercises may seem like senseless, 
futile and useless actions, yet they are valuable and build strength and endurance. Each day, every one of us faces situations that call for the manifestation of willpower and self-discipline. Constant sharpening of the willpower and self-discipline with appropriate exercises increases their strength and makes them available whenever needed. The common theme of the exercises is the refusal to satisfy certain unimportant, unnecessary, or useless desires and habits. The exercises involve overcoming laziness, procrastination, and inner resistance. This process strengthens your willpower and self-discipline, and makes you able to manifest them whenever necessary. The exercises work on the feelings, thoughts, words, and actions. With a positive attitude, and after experimenting for some time, you will enjoy and love this process. If you give up or sacrifice something in the short run, it is in order to gain something better and more satisfying in the long run. Let's say you love to eat and cannot resist sweets, chocolates, and cakes. You eat and enjoy what you eat, but at the same time you also suffer emotionally and mentally, because this makes you gain weight. You know that you have to regulate your eating habits, but you lack the power. Wouldn't you be happy and satisfied if you could reduce the amount of sweets and cakes you eat? Are not better health, a better shaped body, inner strength and lack of emotional and mental anguish worth sacrificing some food? By giving up some undesirable desires and habits, you gain a lot. You give up what is unhelpful, harmful or unimportant, and gain a great and useful power. Don't think that self-discipline will make your life unpleasant and boring. On the contrary, you will be filled with power and be able to put your affairs in order. You will live a better life, with you, holding the reins. The Exercises and Usual Daily Activities In order to reap the full value of the exercises, perform them seriously and enthusiastically. If there is an exercise you do not like or find boring and tedious, that's an excellent reason to perform it. How can you develop inner strength if you run away when you face a difficulty? You will find easy exercises at first, and then you will gradually move on to more difficult ones. What may look difficult now, may be a piece of cake in a short while. You might find some of the exercises boring and tedious, and feel reluctance to perform them. This makes them more valuable for you. As already mentioned previously, willpower is the ability to do whatever one decides to do, even if it is unpleasant, boring, or tedious. If you only do what you like, how can you develop inner strength? You develop inner strength by stopping to be a slave to every passing whim, thought and desire. Most of the exercises presented here can be practiced anywhere and everywhere. They are not restricted to special times, and do not require special preliminaries, set hours, places, or conditions. You can always find the time and place to practice them, as they take advantage of the circumstances and situations of daily life. As you proceed, you will see that various situations suggest various exercises. Many of the exercises can be integrated into daily life, without devoting to them any special time. They are simple and easy, in the sense of not being complicated. They can be practiced by everyone, not only by ascetics or yogis living in the Himalayas. Almost every action and situation in daily life can be turned into an exercise, and this book will show you how. This means that you can develop your will and discipline while going on with your daily affairs. This is a great advantage, as you can train throughout the day and consequently advance faster. Here are a few examples, in order to show you what I mean, suppose you love to drink coffee at breakfast. For one whole week drink tea instead. This action will probably cause inner objection, and your mind and body would refuse to cooperate. They don't like to change habits. Why would you drink tea if you prefer coffee? This action sets your willpower into action. You have to use it in order to fulfill your decision. By using your willpower, even in small matters, you get stronger. Overcoming any sort of resistance increases your willpower. It gets stronger in accordance with the amount of resistance you overcome. By the way, 
after a week of drinking tea you can return to coffee. Sometimes, while walking on the street, count your steps until you reach 100 steps. Concentrate on the counting, and don't let your mind wander to the window shops or to the people passing by. It might not be so easy to do, but it is a powerful exercise. You learn to concentrate and master your mind and senses. The ability you gain will help you on many occasions, such as for example, reading or studying in noisy and crowded places. If you are sitting in a bus full of people, stand up and give your seat for someone else, in spite of your desire to keep it. Most people cross their legs when they sit down. Whenever you become aware of this, change your legs by putting the other one on top of the first. This might feel inconvenient and awkward, and you will need to exercise inner strength to resist the temptation to switch back your legs. Practice this exercise until it stops inconveniencing you. For one week, hold the spoon or fork in the other hand when you eat. All these exercises are derived or connected with situations of daily life. You will find the above exercises in the following chapters. They were produced here only to show you what to expect, and how ordinary daily actions are opportunities for developing your willpower and self-discipline. Overcoming Inner Resistance The mind dislikes anything that interferes with its habits or tries to control it. It will persuade you not to exercise, and suggest to you that you have better and more important things to do. It may tell you that the exercises are useless or too difficult for you. It will even try to make you forget the exercises. It will do whatever it can to stop you. It is as though the mind has a life of its own, and feels that if you become stronger, you will be able to subdue it, and then it will be forced to resign from being your master. Do not be tempted to listen to your mind, but go on to performing the exercises. If you disregard its tireless attempts to sabotage your efforts, its resistance will start to wane. It is natural for the mind to behave as it does. It takes time to change habits. It takes time to become strong and able to act contrary to the instinctive subconscious urges and desires of the mind. If you go on performing the exercises suggested in this book, you will soon begin to love and appreciate them. When you see the results, you will want to perform more exercises and gain more power. Constant practice makes the mind obey you, and it will soon change its habits and assist you in your inner work. The mind can be your friend and ally, and it can be your adversary. It is up to you what you make of it. Most of the exercises in this book call for the performance of habitual actions in a different way. This might sometimes evoke fierce inner opposition. It is the confrontation with this resistance, and performing the action in spite of the resistance that forges the steel of willpower. Every resistance that you overcome makes it easier to conquer other oppositions along the way. What might seem difficult today will look easy in a short while. After you experience the sweet and pleasant feeling of inner strength and victory, and the effect inner strength has on your life, your desire to go on with these exercises will grow. You might think and feel that you are sacrificing some pleasure or a convenient habit by practicing the exercises, but it is all for a purpose. You conquer laziness and give up weak, negative and useless habits and activities, in order to get the treasure of inner strength. This inner strength will make you the master of your life, instead of being the slave of circumstances. As a bodybuilder strengthens and builds his muscles by overcoming the barbell's weight, overcoming inner resistance is the lifting of barbells to build inner strength. In order to make it easier to surmount the inner resistance, start using positive motivating affirmations. Here are a few affirmations you can make use of. Take any one of them, and repeat it for several moments with attention and feeling, whenever you feel the need for it. My mind obeys my will. I am stronger than my mind. My mind is my ally and it helps me to get stronger. I have a very strong willpower. It is very easy for me to exercise and use my willpower. My self-discipline is very strong. My willpower and self-discipline are constantly getting stronger. 
The role of detachment detachment is the ability to stay calm and self-controlled in all circumstances, even if one encounters failure or difficulties. It is the ability not to let thoughts, feelings and desires sweep you off your feet or entangle you in undesirable situations. Detachment is not indifference, coldness or lack of energy. One can be detached, and yet energetic, ambitious and very alive. Detachment allows willpower and self-discipline to manifest more easily, and the development of willpower and self-discipline enhances the display of detachment. They affect each other. Attachment brings fear of loss, and stands in the way of overcoming habits and fears, and of developing strength and independence. Attachment is like chaining the legs to a post or a heavy rock. Detachment, on the other hand, frees from fixed habits and behavior, and brings peace of mind. On some occasions, manifesting willpower means acting contrary to habits and natural inclinations. If one is strongly attachment to a negative habit, he will need more effort to act contrary to it, than if he were not attached. Too much attachment to people, possessions, circumstances and habits, makes it difficult to make changes and get free from unpleasant situations. It may also bring suffering, worries and lack of peace of mind, if something happens to the subject of the attachment. Detachment, on the other hand, helps to keep a cool, clear and concentrated mind in times of turbulence, and consequently enjoy peace of mind. One learns to accept the good and the bad without losing one's composure and inner peace. The exercises in this book help to develop the ability to stay detached, where and when necessary. In time you will find it easier to keep away, and not get involved with negative thoughts, feelings and desires, without much effort. Here are some suggestions to facilitate the display of detachment, try not to be too attached to habits, people and possessions. This does not mean being indifferent, uncaring or unloving. You can be caring, helpful and loving, and yet detached. Refuse to let fears and worries occupy your mind. In order to keep them away, think about or do something else that absorbs your attention. Fear and worry help no one, bind and make it difficult to make changes. When fear and worry are gone, attachment loses its power and the mind gains peace. Don't attach too much importance and value to unimportant objects and subjects that do you no good. Delay for a few seconds your reaction to words, feelings and actions that arouse your emotions. During this time take a few deep breaths to calm you down before reacting. This gives you the time to let some detachment come in. Remind yourself often that by staying calm and detached you avoid making mistakes or acting in a way detriment to your best interests. When you feel that your thinking is getting clouded by too much emotions, take one step back in your mind, and look at your emotions and thoughts as if from the outside, like looking at someone else's feelings and thoughts. Concentration exercises and meditation help to develop detachment. Control of desires. All kinds of desires demand satisfaction each moment of the day. Many of them work on a subconscious level, and we frequently appease them instinctively, before we are aware what we are doing. Satisfying desires has turned into an automatic, unrestrained habit. Here are a few examples, you have a desire to watch a soap opera, and immediately your hand grips the remote control and switches on the TV. You see biscuits on the table, and before you know it, one is already in your mouth. Your body is thirsty, and instead of quenching your thirst with water, you instantly grab a can of beer. You remember some incident, and immediately start talking about it. You are angry with someone, and before you know it, you find yourself yelling at him. A smoker reaches for his cigarette, and before he knows it, he has already lit it. Make a rule to become conscious of your desires, and wait a moment before rushing to satisfy them. Not every desire has to be obeyed and followed instantly without thinking. Pause a moment, and decide which one to appease and which one to deny. In order to be in control and conduct your life in a reasonable way, you need to remember to be aware of your desires, and resist the temptations and inner urge to follow them automatically. 
I am not saying you have to interfere with all your desires. I only say that it is you, who should hold the steering wheel of your life, and not your desires. Some desires may bring happiness and satisfaction, but there are also desires that bring no fulfillment, and only waste time and energy. Following them may bring regret, unhappiness and sorrow. It is by strengthening the inner powers that you become able to defy and conquer these weakening and useless desires. In the following chapters you will find some exercises, which call for restraint and not giving in to certain desires. Most of these desires relate to simple and no so important matters, but their restraint will increase your willpower and self-discipline. There are many worthless and unimportant desires that can be denied, at least temporarily, in order to develop inner strength. After you are convinced that you can easily resist a particular desire, you may return to appease it, if you are still interested, and the desire is not harmful. By sacrificing some desires you get stronger and more powerful. By refusing to obey unimportant urges you gain strength, which will be at your disposal whenever you need it. This book will teach you to be aware of what is going inside your mind, and to be able to choose and follow your course of action, instead of following automatic responses, desires, habits and actions. I am not trying to turn you into a fakir, but only to show you a method for gaining inner power. There are enough unnecessary or unhealthy desires, which can be denied and refused, without going to extreme and unhealthy denials. Refusal and denial of unnecessary desires develops inner strength. As mentioned in other places in this book, it is like bodybuilding. The muscles need the resistance of the barbells in order to get stronger. Overcoming negative, unnecessary or useless desires is like lifting barbells. This act strengthens the power of the will and enhances self-discipline. Consciously and purposely refraining from useless, unnecessary and worthless desires, thoughts, feelings and actions builds up and reinforces will power and self-discipline. Each time you reject and refuse to appease any senseless, unimportant and unnecessary desire, you charge the battery of your willpower and self-discipline. When the battery of your willpower and self-discipline is fully charged, it supplies power whenever it is needed. Advice and Tips in the next chapter you are going to start with the exercises, which constitute the practical part of this book, but before that I would like to suggest some helpful advice and tips. Some of the advice may have been already mentioned before, but repetitions are always good. The exercises have been arranged from the easy to the more difficult. The next chapter contains simple, introductory exercises. Practice all of them, and in the order they are arranged. After you gain some experience with them you may proceed to the other exercises in the book. Don't attempt to practice immediately all the exercises that are suggested. Start with just a few each day, and as you get stronger, advance further and add more. If right at the beginning you start with exercises that are too difficult you might fail, lose your faith in the exercises and give up. This is why it is advisable to start with the easier exercises. The exercises do not need any special environment or preliminary preparations before practicing them. Except some exercises, which need to be done when alone, most of them will be conducted during daily life, wherever you are. Here are a few tips, begin with the first set of exercise in Chapter 4. They do not demand too much effort, and are therefore more suitable to begin with. Start the day with a few words of motivation. After you wake up in the morning tell yourself about your desire to possess a strong willpower and develop self-discipline. Think about how they will improve your life and help you accomplish your goals. Remind yourself several times each day of your resolution to strengthen your willpower and self-discipline and how much they are important to you. If you fail or do not perform an exercise properly, don't get angry with yourself. It is okay. Power is not gained in a day. Analyze why you failed, and then try again. Persevere in your efforts even if it is tough sometimes. Develop faith in yourself and in your ability to improve and strengthen your inner powers, 
even if at first you are not very successful. Know that even strong people, with a mighty will power, had to train and strengthen their power. Most of them were not born with it. Remember what was said about detachment, and exercise some detachment while practicing the exercises. Keep calm, and don't get carried away by every trivial emotion, thought or word that comes along. Earnestness and willingness will help you progress faster. Don't constantly compare yourself to other people, and don't worry if you think your progress is not fast enough. Each well-done exercise adds to your power. Pay attention and concentrate on what you are doing, and it will be easier to carry on each exercise. Chapter 4 The First Series of Exercises Forward Everything you have read so far, has been crucial to the understanding of the exercises and their correct performance, and was designed to prepare you for the practical part. Now the time has come to start with the exercises. The first exercises are simple, easy, introductory exercises. They consist of doing certain actions, which need patience, attention, intent and the use of inner power to overcome inner resistance. Even though they might look strange or ridiculous, do not underestimate their value. They are useful and beneficial exercises, designed to provide you positive results. By first training yourself and gaining experience in small and insignificant matters, you gain the ability to use your willpower and manifest self-discipline in more important matters. It is the same as with studying a new language. You begin with simple, easy-to-read books, such as children's stories, because they use a simple language and a basic vocabulary. Learning the basics of the language prepares and trains you to talk fluently later. Start with the first exercise and do it several times each day for several days. When you feel that it poses no difficulties, move on to the second one, and also practice it several times each day. Go on until you practice all the exercises in this chapter, before going to the next one. You might find some of the exercises too easy, and after a few times you may feel that you can advance to next exercise. It is better to stay with each exercise in this chapter for at least three days, before going to the next one. It is also possible that you find some exercises are more difficult, and you will need more time to master them. That is okay. Take all the time you need. No timetable can be given, as progress is an individual matter. Your reason, judgment and intuition should be the judge when to move to the next exercise. Remember, there is no need for haste. Better advance slowly, but steadily. Don't feel frustrated if you find your progress too slow. If for a long time in your life you have let your impulses, urges and other people to control your life, it takes time to change this situation. If you feel you need more time for each exercise, this is all right. Don't be impatient and rush from one exercise to another, as if in a race. Do each exercise thoroughly, calmly, earnestly and attentively. It is quite possible that sometimes you will feel eager to perform several types of exercises each day, and move fast to the next chapter. Your ability to cope with this impatience and curb it is a test for your power of will and patience. For the first exercises find a place and time when you can be alone and undisturbed. You can wake up 15 minutes earlier each day to practice these exercises, or find any other suitable time. Don't do the exercises before going to sleep at night or when you are tired or sleepy. You need to be alert and fully awake while performing them. After practicing the exercises successfully you will experience an exhilarating feeling of power and victory. This will enhance your confidence and faith in the effectiveness of the exercises, and your desire to continue doing them will grow. It is very important to gain confidence right from the start. You will advance faster if after every successful exercise you tell yourself, I have done it. I am strong, and can do greater things. Don't underestimate the importance of these words. Always acknowledge your success. This sends a positive message of strength and power to your subconscious mind. Perseverance is the key to success. 
The end of the book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with a new book.